Hey, what's up everybody? We're mixing it up today. We're talking about camera deliciousness and we're talking about macro lenses. I've been shooting food photography professionally for a number of years. I started out shooting commercial food photography and then moved on to shooting things like my own cookbook uh, and now things like Instagram and recipes for people. And if I could only pick one lens, it would be a macro lens, specifically this 100 millimeter macro lens. Almost every food photographer I know that is a version of that anyway, is their go-to lens. It's like the Swiss army knife of lenses. It can do literally anything. There tends to be this perception around macro lenses that they only shoot things very close, like bugs or leaves or you know something outside. But honestly, you can really use it for anything. And specifically in food photography, they are the king. So food photography, just like any kind of photography, is an art form. Because of that, you might have lenses that you love and lenses that you don't love so much, and that's totally cool. There's no one size fits all with any kind of photography. Uh, macro lenses, though, specifically, are amazing. And you know, if you haven't tried one before, I'd recommend renting one, uh, trying one out, borrowing one from a friend if you can, just to see if you fall in love with it. So what do I love about this lens? Number one, Food photography is all about the details. So food photography, just like any kind of photography, is all about storytelling, which kind of sometimes gets neglected in the food photography side of things. We take pictures really quickly, and we don't think about it you know, long enough to say, how do I tell this story in the best way possible? Really, the best way is to create this fly on the wall experience where you're actually looking into someone's dining experience. What would they be eating? What would they be doing? What things would be inducing hunger in that moment? And how do you make that accessible so that somebody feels transported there? One really great way to do that is to capture things like water droplets on blueberries or on cherry tomatoes or the glistening on the top of bacon, on top of a nice soup. They're very close, interactive. You can almost smell smell and taste and feel them. They feel like they're about to pop off the frame. One of the things that allows you to get that close is uh, something like on this lens is a one-to-one -one magnification. What that means is that you can take a photograph of something true to life actually what size it would be comes out in the frame. And there's amazing possibilities. So that's what allows you to shoot those pictures of bugs or butterflies or cherry tomatoes or blueberries or whatever so close. The second thing that I love about macro lenses is that they provide distance. Let me explain. So oftentimes when we look at a lens, we say it's this focal length, so I have to shoot it for this. Or this lens is best for portraiture and I can only use it for that. Or this lens is only good for macro possibilities and capabilities. But the truth is lenses are tools. They're tools so that you can actualize the creative vision in your head in your camera, ultimately, then in your computer, and then for the world to see. The great thing about a macro lens is that it can do all of those things. You can take photos of food super close, or you can take two or three or 10 steps back and capture the food in that way, adding more context, adding more scenery, and telling a greater contextual story. A focal length like 100 millimeters is amazing too because you get this incredible compression because of the long focal length. So what is in focus is tack sharp and macro lenses are absolutely tack sharp. But what is out of focus in that glorious bocalicious area is amazing. You get this incredible shallow depth of field. There really is no lens like it. And if you added a 50 millimeter or a 35 millimeter or a 24 to 70 in that same context, could they take great photographs? Of course, but it wouldn't give you the same compression. And to be honest with you, it wouldn't tell the same story. It might tell a great story, but it wouldn't be the same story. And you need to determine what story you're trying to tell. All right, the third thing, stabilization. So stabilized lenses are amazing for so many reasons. A lot of the food videos that we shoot here, of course we shoot a ton of B-roll for them and a lot of that is on the macro stabilized lens. What that does is it allows us a ton of flexibility if we wanna capture those creative movement kind of shots. We don't use gimbals and huge tripods and that kind of thing here because we need to run and gun and go and we need the flexibility so that stabilization really helps us. All right, and last but not least, rocking those tasty portraits. So something that you might not have considered, especially if you're already shooting food photography on a macro lens, is that it is an incredible portrait lens. The focal length itself 
is absolutely heavenly. The compression that it offers, the fast aperture, it's just amazing, you know, and I would definitely get out the box and use that in a completely new way. If you are shooting food photos, take it out, shoot some photos of your friends. It's really gonna open your eyes to new possibilities for a lens that might just be sitting on your cabinet until it's food time. So macro lenses truly are one of the absolute rock stars of the lens world. I wanna encourage you guys, if you normally shoot macro super close, take a few steps back or take it out if you normally shoot food, shoot some portraiture of your friends and family. You'll be amazed with the quality and the visual interest and honestly just the creative excitement that you get from shooting something new. Remember, if you're gonna tell a food story, tell it well, tell it in context, but really think, how do I tell this story best? If you guys wanna see more camera tutorials or talking about cameras, comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. If you have questions, hit that below as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week for more deliciousness.